up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Bitch, I wake up and get money. I wake up and get money. I sell plates so I ain't hungry. I take flights across the country. Bitch, I'm looking for that funky. We got guys out in them street bowls. We ain't standing at no light pole. Nah. The bitch 360 light pole. Nah. I'm gonna handle all my robbing. With this music, I'm a problem. Chill. And ain't no one gonna solve it. You gonna put your page on private. I make money turn to violence. Nah. Niggas, shout out to my shotters. All my workers move that product. That product. If the devil wears Prada, then my girl must be the hottest. He yo mad, I'm in the Bahamas. <laughs> Had to pay him out my pockets. Can't damn. afford no violations. I, I learned freedom time is priceless. They've been saying I'm the nicest. So I'm up in all my prices. Want a feature from the gang? It's gonna probably cost you mortgage. Probably. I just wake up and get money. 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 I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Bitch, I wake up and get money. Bitch, I'm finna wake up and get money. I ain't stopping these hundreds, keep stacking up. Stuffing double bags in the cyber truck. If she finna slide, then I'm finna nut. And it's no cap, we finna get racks. And if you talk back, then you can get slapped. One night stand, night ain't calling back. Not 45 tuck, I never lack. You can get smoke like a chimney. Now you sound like crickets, you Jiminy. And that pussy can like it's a bumblebee. And you don't need to ask, cause you fucking me. Cause I roll it with 40s and 40s and 40s. And I got them running like cardio. And I just been shining my gold in the front. So now make them bleed like the time of the month. I just, I just wake money. up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I just wake up and get money. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Bitch, I wake up and get money. I just 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 wake up and get money. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. I got hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Bitch, I wake up and get money. I Let mines go. I done sat in this prison cell around a hundred thousand up times four. And this back to that blind, fuck, fuck, blind, fuck, fuck, blind fool. If you ain't feeling it the way I'm giving it, then you can simply press fast forward. Ask the titty she asked for. BBL spade cash for. 20 steps on her passport. 200 miles on my dashboard. I've been to door, just bash doors. Get some fuck about it, boy. If it's a problem, I put up on check, check. Fuck if I ain't got a dollar. I start from the bottom and run up on check, check. What you doing for? Hey, my young niggas hit, they gon' shoot for. Hey, skinny get thick, she gon' twerk for. Hey, and if she a thot, she gon' fuck for. Hey, well, I got a check, I got a check, I got a check, check. Well, I got a check, I got a check, I got a check, check. Boy, I ain't trippin' cause I got a check. Thinking this bitch cause I got a check. You can get strippin', yeah, I got a check. The track of white drippin' cause I got a check. Mad 90s, full force. Infrareds, gold scopes, 
Hollow tips turn rose golds and bullet holes through closed doors. Fans watching through gold pro, but we ain't stopping, that's no goal. Product wrapped up in old clothes, and that product trapped by old hoes. And she nervous when she picking it up, cause she knows she riding with a brick in the trunk. Got a really sad with a brick on the ball, serving at another brick in the tub. Product prop, I ain't switching it up. I've been focused, grinding, doing 60 a month. Fans behind us got the stick in the front, stick in the front, stick in the front. Y'all niggas exaggerated, the other half of y'all fabricated. Power moves, they count. Two star phones, I'm activated. BBS, they captivate. If I ain't had it, I had to take it. You was fed, I had to make it. Had to make it. Had to make it. Check, check. I could get some fuck about it, boy. If it's a problem, I put up on check, check. Fuck if I ain't got a dollar, I'm stuck from the bottom and run up on check, check. What you doing for? Check. My young niggas hit, they gon' shoot for. Check. Skinny and thick, she gon' twerk for. Check. And if she a thigh, she gon' fuck for. Check. Well, I got a check. I got a check. I got a check. Check. Well, I got a check. I got a check. I got a check. Check. Hey, 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 you know I fuck with the town, haven't you? And by the way, my name is Steady, but hey, smoke, hey, bring it me that. Second hand smoke. Hey, 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 shorty want me so bad. She brought me a bag, cool little 10 piece just to throw in the stash. I'm in the city today, the uh -huh. next week is the next time. Week home of pairs of pimps, you know how to get you know down. Might get a side show just to knock me a hoe. Price out to the beach and get a job at the show. Treat myself with some leaves, uh -huh. fried chicken with mac. Ooh. Candy M's on the side while I count the stacks. Take a stacks. break and relax and then it's back to the paper. Little mama hit me up and said, let's death in a scraper. We top back and we roll. Uh -huh. Finna burn up some cooks. Put it up to any folk while I handle the wild. Said the hoe and now we posted at the Oracle Center. Finna watch go to state tip uh, off with the uh, whips. I'm in the uh, sky by some chillin'. Uh, like when that were familiar. Oh, yeah. Numbers going so crazy. Them niggas don't know the niggas don't know the feeling. Them niggas don't know the feeling. They wish they did though. Why he posted up broke his fucking the trap and so we're vibing, counting them stacks. And it's all off the bitch, nigga. You ain't gotta ask, just look at my wrist, nigga. <laughs> Say, man, it's Street Top Radio LA. Uh huh. Street Top Radio LA, man, I appreciate Street Top Radio LA, man, I appreciate you guys tapping in each and every Tuesday to my show. Make sure y'all follow me on my YouTube channel. That's Tree Top Radio LA. Or you can space it out, Tree Top Radio LA. Um, you can follow, like, subscribe, and share. Every time um, I go live, you'll get a notification. I do do marketing for artists, brands, and businesses. You can contact me on my Instagram page. That's Tree Top Radio. I'm sorry. That's Tree Top underscore Radio LA. Make sure y'all holler at me, man. I got good deals. Um, I do do video editing as well. I do do photography for any type of events. Just let me know. Especially happy birthday, Kazo. It's your motherfucking birthday, bitch. You getting old and shit, man. You better turn the fuck up, Sabrina. Hey. Happy birthday. Oh, hello. Welcome to TTRLA, the wonderful land of cartoons. Here, we make dreams come true. Anything that you want to do has to be started by you. Today on TTRLA, 
first episode, we have the Black Elote Man. That's right, the Black Elote Man. For those of my people around the globe looking at this commercial and don't know what an elote is, it's the best goddamn corn you'll ever have in your damn life. I'm going to have my man Black Corn Man take it away. Black Corn Man, it's on you. And this is... Elijah and his helper, Femi. And we're going to learn how to make esquite. Esquite. Okay, so what do we do first? We, um, get a cup. Okay. Okay. You know, like, we feel like the... Words Hello of Wisdom there. Tuesdays from Grandpops. I want to shout out to all my grandbabies followers that have been turning up her views uh since i've been on here she's been getting a lot more likes and so i like that for her you know make sure y'all tune in uh tomorrow tuesday 4 p.m specific 7 p.m eastern time now today's words of wisdom is making that dash in between your born date and your death date count wondering grandpa what do you mean the dash well when you die and it an obituary is, is made for you. It has the day that you came into the world and the day you left. And then there's a dash. When they get to that dash, they read your credits like a movie. It's all your contributions to the world. Some people leave this world with no contribution at all. They just leave. What will your obituary say? Do you want a legacy or do you want to just leave? My name is Michelle. I have been kidnapped. Can you stop pointing the fucking gun at me? It's making me nervous. To ensure my safe return home, please pay us one million, one million pounds. Is that it? Is that what you think I'm worth? Radio LA, man. My motherfucking boy, free, man. Simple free, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. Since simple free, we, we go ahead and crank that, man. Yeah, that, man. Long live now. Shout out to the house team, man. Shout out to all his friends and his family, man. Protect Simba at all costs. You did? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
simple free, man. Welcome home. We sucker free out here. You feel me? Yeah, that. Hey, man, Tree Talk Radio all night, man. We are broadcasting live in Baltimore, Maryland, man, via Los Angeles, California. Y'all already know I'm the littest host you ever did see. You feel me? I'm your host, Big Homie Smiles, man. Make sure y'all follow my new Instagram page. IG be hating on me. You feel me? Be, be throwing salt. Be salt bad, me. You know what I mean? But uh, follow my new Instagram page. That's Big Homie underscore Smiles, backup page 41. CH, I believe it's like that. Um, so go ahead, check that out. Follow me, man. We got an amazing show for you. Uh, me and my co-host, Black Corn Man, who is who is in LA. We had a wonderful and shout out to Black Corn uh, Man's mom, Mama Black Corn Man. Uh, she gave us a, a wonderful idea to talk about a wonderful topic that is really so relevant right now in this uh, generation. Um, it's called, it, the topic is affirmative action. And uh, before we get into it, though, I just want to thank my audience, man. I just want to thank y'all out there, YouTube, man, whether you listening to me in the car, whether you listening to me with a friend, if you uh, see me on YouTube, I appreciate y'all, man. Whether it's one or none, whether it's a few or two, I can't do this without you. You feel me? Give yourself a big hug. Hug yourself. Hug yourself. Love yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all about self-love in 2023. Now, we got a great, 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 great topic for you today. Um, affirmative action, uh, again, the purpose of this topic is to just bring more awareness to what affirmative action is. I realize that the younger generation, they don't really have a lot of knowledge about history, our history, especially when you're dealing with uh, Black uh, African-American history, the youth is lost. They don't really know nothing about nothing. So this is really more of a, like a refresher course. And I really want us to like dig down deep into whether or not affirmative action was really a beneficial law for the black and Hispanic community, or was it a detrimental law? You know what I'm saying? Did it help us go to the top or did it keep us at the bottom will keep us marginalized to keep us lazy. You know what I'm saying? You know, it is affirmative action. Comp could you, could we compare affirmative action to welfare or, you know, prison almost, but I'm, I'm going to show you why I'm going to go ahead and put that together later on when I, I bring my co-host in. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the topic. We basically going to touch bases on affirmative action. We're going to dig deep into what affirmative action is, how it came about, the pros and the cons of affirmative action, you feel me? Uh, before I let my, my co-host get, I think my manager just told me. Did he pull up? Okay, y'all know how my manager do. My manager always do a B.I.G. He got the two beautiful, voluptuous, black. No, he got three. Is that three? I ain't even peep shorty in the back. He got man busting, like figure all busting. You feel me? If you know, you know. And then he pulled up. Oh, he did it. He did a job differently. He pulled up in the in the uh in a Aventador, a Aventador. A I can't even pronounce that. Aventador. He pulled up in a Aventador. You feel me with his two, with his three bad joints. You feel me? So we're gonna let him in. Hey, tell him go ahead in the green room. All right, got the doobies rolled up for him. Flew that out from Cali. And there's some snacks in there, Chick-fil-A. Go ahead. All right. So before we bring my uh my guy on, you feel me? I'm gonna just do one quick commercial break, real quick. And then we're going to get into it. I'm going to go ahead and bring my man in. Say, man, motivation motherfucking Mondays. You know the fuck going on, man. We steady going up, man. We steady manifesting our dreams, man. We trust in our process, man. We're not letting anyone get in between. Man, make some noise. Make some money. Make some noise. Make some for Black Core Man, the littest co-host on the East and West Coast, you feel me? Yo, what's the deal? <laughs> what is do, Brody? What's man, good? got that good Sheba, you feel me? We'll we'll never we'll never slip with our with, with, with our people, man. I told I told man to go ahead and have my man good while he yeah. in the back rolling up the spliff, you feel me? Getting right. You feel we getting right around here. So we doing it. I mean, today is a is a is a very powerful topic. You know, shout out to Patron too. If y'all yeah. want to sponsor us here at the PTRLA show, we with it. You know, we we all want black Sponsors, and Mexican. Right now. We we want. 
So, um, so today's topic, uh, as you know, Black Coleman is affirmative action. Now, I just wanted to kind of give people a definition because I feel like our generation don't really understand what affirmative action really is. And I think maybe a lot of people may have confused, is confusing affirmative action uh, with other things than what it really is. So I just want to break down the definition of what it is. Now, affirmative action is defined as a set of procedures designated to eliminate unlawful discrimination among applicants, right? It's the remedy, the results of such prior discrimination and and prevention of such discrimination in the future. So for example, applicant may be seeking admission into an educational program or looking for professional employment. Affirmative action actually is a law that enforces to the school or to the employer to hire someone that is marginalized. And in America's case, Black people and Hispanics are the most marginalized group of minorities in the country. So affirmative action was back then during during like the 1960s, during the civil rights era, was more so for us as black and brown minorities to get a fair chance at a fair seat at what we wanted to be at was the white man's table. You feel me? We wanted a fair seat at the white Huh? We wanted a fair seat at that table, right? And so affirmative action just gave us the gave us the ability to get at that table without really having to not put in work, but without having to go above and beyond to get there. So affirmative action was just no, like no, a, no, wait. No, I gotta disagree right there. And I think that's where people make the big mistake. They think oh. that damn, she looked like she belong on fake. But um they they think that. <laughs> Um, people on affirmative action means that they didn't work hard and that they just got it. No, it means that you would have got it. You deserve it. If you weren't black, you would have got it. But because you're black, you got passed up. So we're going to give you this opportunity knowing that it's because right. you're black. Okay. Way to break. That's, See, that's the confusion. I, I myself was confused a little bit. You feel me? Yeah, and that's when people got it like you know people got it wrong. It's like nah, it's not that this nigga don't deserve it. He deserves it. He would he sh if he was white, he would have already had it. That's the point. Right. But because right. he's not white, he's now like okay, we need to give you this because you deserve it, and and right. you have to be black or right. or Hispanic. And you gotta be black and or Hispanic. You gotta be black or Hispanic. Yeah. So, so that is correct. So affirmative action. So I'm gonna correct myself. So affirmative action doesn't that did did not does not mean that a, a black or Hispanic person that isn't qualified to be in this institution or be a professional. It means that they are qualified, but because they're black or Hispanic, they're passed up because they're not white. Exactly. exactly. Okay. There we go. There we go. So we're gonna keep so a affirm, so a yeah, affirmative action. Right. Let's go that, huh? Yeah, I so said we're gonna keep getting it right. Affirmative action was just making it fair. Yeah, affirmative action was just making it fair. And to, to continue on the fairness, so affirmative action actually ex existed. So for those people that don't know, affirmative action actually existed in America since the 19th century. Now it was first, it had first appeared in um in our in a in American like policies and politics, in the form of President Kennedy, when he uh, signed the executive order, it's called the ten nine two five. Now I'm gonna tell you what this executive order that president. Now this is another reason why too. I'm going off topic, but this is another reason why a lot of the uh, the white people that uh, was going against John Kennedy. This is one of the reasons why because. This act during the 1960s, like put him in the same, put him in a boat with the minorities because he was trying to make everybody fair, everything fair. So the a, a President Kennedy's executive order, the 10925 in 1961, it states the contractor will take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and that employees are treated during employment without regard to their race, creed, color, or national origin. Now, now fast forward to now, we have laws like the, the, the No Discrimination Acts, which stems, you know, where you can't discriminate on race, color, 
family uh family orientation you know sexual orientation so a lot yeah, of this a lot classes. of these uh, laws that we have in in work you know what i'm saying it it all stems from a firm action for people trying to get uh be get more fair treatment in these different like high uh very big places is that kind of right yeah yeah, so affirmative action. So affirmative action was created by by President Kennedy in 1961. Uh, John F. Kennedy issued an executive order mandating. So this one to get tricky, right? So John F. Kennedy, he like, man, I'm for the people. I want I want to walk and talk with my black and brown brothers. I want them to be sitting at my white table. So he said, this is what I'm gonna do for y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and make this an executive order, and I'm gonna mandate the government to take to make sure that contractors take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and that employees are treated are treated during employment without regard to their race, creed, or color. So then he made it a mandate, right? So then, as you got, so this is when we get into the pros, the advantages, and disadvantages of affirmative action because this was a mandate, right? Now, before I get into the pros and cons, and then I want you to tell me your pros and cons, Black woman. So, but yeah. before I get into it, though, I just want to say, now, I'm for, I'm, I appreciate affirmative action. Let me just start by saying that. I appreciate affirmative action. However, I do feel like it should have been like a, a certain amount of time that affirmative action should have been implemented, right? Only reason why I say that, and then we're going to get into the advantages and disadvantages. Only reason why I say that is because when you have laws like this that is exclusive, that's like kind of exclusively for brown and uh, white, I mean, brown and uh, black people, it can kind of create lack of lackluster, okay? It can create kind of a lackluster environment for the black and brown community because they know automatically that this is a mandated law and you got to hire me because I'm black. But, and but that's not how it works. So and, that, and, and I think that more, more than anything, the law was passed for this reason. It, it creates more of a propaganda about it. So it's more of a shameful thing than it is like, no, it's not. It's not that anybody that's black is just going to walk in and get hired. It's saying that you guys as a company need to hire a certain amount of respectable uh, people of color, because if you have this many employees, how can you not have any that are of color that you, that are also of value for the position? At no point is right. it that the motherfuckers are not busting their ass to be the best motherfucker they could still be. It's just that they're not going to get that opportunity because they're black. And so this law says, no, you can't say they can't get the opportunity just because they're black, because if they were white, they would get it. So they deserve to have it by being a minority member, too. And we got to stop putting that because you've got the same stigma we got to stop having that stigma that it's people that are not as hard working or that do not bust their ass to still do it it's you have to first bust your ass to know that that's something in your field that's a, that has a mandate you know like you're to be able to find the company that's still within those bounds of like oh you need, right. I need to find a company now that has too many white people pretty much and that's not what people look for they go i'm going to find this company that i want to work at and then it happens to be sometimes that bam this company doesn't have enough people of minority so they do hire this person as one of their affirmative action people but it's often that the person already has the requirements and the recommendations for the job it's just that they would get overlooked for being black that they do get the position yeah, I agree with that too. And that's that's definitely that's definitely true too. But on the flip side of that, because we gotta play devil's advocate, is some people, is some of us black and brown that actually search Ain't nobody for slacking their ass off for affirmative action. We barely know about it, like you said. Even people that did know about it, like you had to have the requirements to still get there. It's just not happening. Like it's something they stumble upon by chance. And I get what you're saying. The other side is that motherfuckers could be slacking for it. But that specifically is not something that people are slacking on to hope to come up with. That shit like a no, lot of you right. That's fine. not specifically. But people can use affirmative yeah. action. It, 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 they can they can as use being marginalized. They can use themselves being marginalized as a way to kind of like terrorize a company or institution. They could they could seek out okay, but, say, but on the other hand, don't shouldn't they? 
Like, shouldn't you use your blackness and the fucking trouble you went through and your people went through to be black as a weapon? Like, fuck you, company. Give me this shit for this fucking reason. My people didn't been through enough and you didn't fucking blame. Somebody down your line started off with some cotton-picking motherfuckers and y'all actually Whoa. got paid for the loss of slaves. So run me my shit. However the fuck I need to get. Like, I want some fucking reparations, goddammit. I think we should get land, but fuck, I want it. Right, that's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess in a sense, but but what I'm trying to say is like, I guess like we don't want, but because when because right, why because we as a as a nation as a culture, we 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 built civil rights on getting at being seated at their table, right? So when we create laws, when laws like this, this law was created by a white man, right? So when laws yeah. like this are created, just like Section 8, just like vouchers, right? These are things that was used to have benefit our community, but it's, 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 it's no, like, it's no it's, end it's to really, it. And so yeah, yeah, it's people, really for the benefit of the, of the, of the white man. Yeah, you're huh? attached to it. It's really for the benefit of the white man. He's trying to get you on the T. Yeah, you're attached so it's to not it. like, okay. I understand. Yeah, it's not like they created affirmative action to really to to really help like us. Yeah, help no, us and create not. change. They only did it. They only did it because we were, were protesting. We were boycotting businesses. They was losing money. So they say, yeah, okay, they're like, yeah, we're going to throw a these, dog these a bone. Bamas, these Bamas yeah. is, is making, they the, they the bread and butter of the white community. You know what I'm saying? So let's give them a little something. Let's throw the voucher in there. Yeah. Let's throw a little right. bit of desegregation in there. Let's throw a little bit of affirmative action in there just so that they can feel like they are part of the table, but they really not because guess what, Black Homan, these laws that's implemented, implemented right now it's not, it's not really beneficial too much to us because we can establish our own shit. Yeah, exactly. It's keeping us separated. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it the the I guess the, the the pros the pro for me for affirmative action, yes, back in the day during that time period of 1960s, the civil rights movement, because that was that was what we was on, desegregating and being a, a unified world and being with the white people. We wanted a piece of the pie, right? The con yeah. being we never needed a piece of a pie. We never yeah, needed to sit exactly. at that table. We never exactly. needed them to create these type of laws because we created our own government. We created our own laws. We created our own school system. We created our own job. We created our own Wall Street. So we never really, I guess what I'm saying is we never really need these type of laws. So that because politicians are, like you said, you mentioned earlier, which was good. You said propaganda. Because politicians are pushing the propaganda of trying to make us more marginalized than what we really are, then people, then you got the, then you got the KKK or you got the nationalists, the white nationalists, like these black people and Hispanics are lazy. They just want stuff given to them when really it was only supposed to be created for like a certain time period, maybe for like 30 years for the first 30 years, affirmative action. Boom. That should balance it out. You know what I, I mean? I, believe, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I believe that the only reason that it it wouldn't have worked that way is because there's it's not set to a percentage of how much like the percentage is so low that you need to have of people of color in there's like that's not even really making nothing fair type of shit. It's just enough to say, look, oh we did something, like oh we let y'all in and shit. That's it. Right. We just let y'all in. It's not like no, like you said, no, no real no you let real you put your foot in the door and shit. You're not you're not really inside. You just got your foot in. You think exactly. You and it's, it kind of it's almost like uh, I made a comparison before you had tapped in. I said affirmative action kind of can be like jail, too, in a sense. Right. So yep. when you go to when jail is to kind of be like a reform. Right. Going to jail is supposed to be reform. It's supposed to be a way to reform you so that you can uh, be populated back into society as a normal, productive citizen, not causing chaos. Affirmative action was a type of reform to create change in a, in a, in society where black and brown people were marginalized. But what happens is it does it like jail. It doesn't reform anybody like this affirmative action. Yeah, it may get our foot in the door, but are we becoming owners? Do are we are we owning majority of the land? Are we owning these big universities and corporations? What they doing is they getting our foot in the door to workers like slaves because they know we won't be here. We press. Yep. 
Yeah, it's giving us the illusion, like, oh, look, these motherfuckers that do got their foot in the door, everybody else don't, so y'all want to at least try to hey, get at least get your foot in the door type shit. Yeah, like, that, nah, that's all they want us to do. It's like, at least you got your foot in the door, black man, black woman, black oh, lesbian, yeah. black m- mother of five, black single father, black, you know, married man, you know what I'm saying? At least you got your foot in the door. At least you can sit at the, uh, the, the corner of the table with the white folk. You may not you may not can be right beside the owner because you don't you don't qualify really for real. You know what I'm saying? Your money ain't long like ours. You don't got no no assets. You don't got no. You ain't bringing in generational wealth. You feel me? So I think yeah. I think like a major con of like affirmative action and laws like this is that it just creates a dependency in our society because we haven't amongst ourselves. Conglo- like in a, as a collaborative came up with a solution on how we can remove ourselves from the white man table. <laughs> yeah, and I think that was that was the real problem. I think affirmative action is fine. Like, all right, affirmative action is cool. It really needs to be tougher, like a, a higher percentage. But to me, it was the desegregation that we fucked up. Like, all right, we did. We shouldn't have wanted to mix with them. We should have just been like, look, we deserve what the fuck we deserve over here on this side of shit. And I get it, fucking. Uh, Separate but equal was a big thing that was just like not actually happening, and that was the problem. But fuck that, we should have stayed separate and then just been yeah, we could have been separate. But right, look, but think about it, black woman. Right now, we we just like separate but equal. Yeah, but we not, and we know we still not, and that's the problem. That's why we fight so hard to get involved in they shit because they get it better. <laughs> In school is better, even they public schools is better than our public school shit like that. So that's why we fighting so hard to get into white shit because it's better. But if it was actually equal where we were getting as good as they were getting, we shouldn't have no reason to want to be where they at. Like, nah, I don't want to fucking be over there in that Caucasian. Why would I want to mix with people I don't relate to and shit? I want to be right. in my area in my sector. But what y'all got right. is actually is, is more beneficial. Y'all kids are coming out more mentally uh, aware about shit. Y'all kids are coming out more educated, shit like that. Having experienced more things, and that's what we want. That's what we chasing after. Right, we chasing after. We chasing that's after what they keep We want to be diversified, but we don't want y'all stealing our stuff. You know, and and, and for my for my uh, I mean, non minority, we, we get our stuff stolen anyways. Though but, uh, that's what I think. We like we we too nice in that sense. We don't even really care about that shit. You could take our stuff. We trying to get what the fuck y'all got. And the thing right. that we have fucked up is that we think we need to go with y'all to get what you got. Nah, we right. should be able to get what we You get the fuck off our back. That's it. That's the only real problem. That's, that's what I be trying to fucking get across. It's like, look, if white right. people stop doing all the fucking systematic bullshit that we have to deal right. with, take away all that shit, really make it even and fair and shit. And right. then let us come on. We gonna blow y'all out the water. We not worried about that shit. Y'all can take our shit every time. We gonna still come up with some. We not what we gonna come up we, with. Something we else. still gonna come up. You can take the gold. We, we gonna we gonna come up with gold thunder, nigga. How you gonna take gold thunder? Come on, we gonna come up with something. We ain't never worried about that shit. We like whatever they all because everything that is anything came from our culture and got stolen and they took it. So it's like we don't give a shit that you robbing us. We just want to be able to fucking reap the benefits too. Right, we want to reap the benefits, and like for real, for real, and the benefit. And okay, to throw another benefit of affirmative action, the real benefit of the main, not the benefit, but the main objective for my people, for my for my non minority people that are tuning in to the TTRLA show with Black Home Man and Treats and Big Homie Smiles. I want y'all to know that we not prejudice because we black yeah, people we not against caucasians we not, we not against y'all uh, we not against the caucasians okay we and we can't be yeah, racist because we don't own the land but we trying to we trying to make y'all more aware of of what it is in reality instead of what yeah, y'all assume the plight it is. of a black individual in america yeah you feel me so uh, but the main the main objective for real of affirmative action right is to really help the poor and and disadvantage it's to help the poor and disadvantaged. Now, the result of aff- affirmative action is uh, it gives it gives us the opportunity to, you know, have privilege in a white society. Now, the benefits of affirmative action are typically spread across the entire population. So it's not like it's just for one p- a particular group in a particular area. It's for everybody. So affirmative That's action funny. definitely... But wait, wait, but I want I do want to say that it does only affect a particular group. Like because only a certain group of people are gonna be already re- uh, 
are already gonna have the requirements for that position. That's the one shit that that they really be tricking you. But it's not like, oh, we're gonna bring Joe Buck to come fucking be president of the company. No, you gotta be president worthy. And usually we'll say fuck you because you're black, but because of this law, we're gonna say okay. Right. You and, know what I mean? So and, like it's only, it's only a select. Here you go. Go ahead. You say what? It's only a select what? It's only a select group of people that are going to have the requirements for that position anyways. You know what I mean? Right. No, that's fact. That's fact. And and for real, uh, you know, affirmative action is, is, is really an equal opportunity employment practice designed to overcome discriminatory barriers that prevent individuals from achieving their full potential. So affirmative action just really... Puts us in a yes, it gets our foot in the door. We do the we do the work by showing showing the people that let us in the door. Hey, I deserve to be here. This is why. Because I'm gonna bust my ass, I'm gonna get shit done, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go above and beyond and shit like that. So it was based on the idea of equality for opportunity for for human rights. But people don't know, it's, it's, I don't know if you knew this, that there are two types of affirmative action. So the first type is descriptive. Now, descriptive affirmative action refers to affirmative action policy that focus on the description of a specific group of people. So affirmative act, the descriptive, the descriptive affirmative action for black and Hispanic people was to allow them to get into these high, high educational institutions because it was predominantly white. Now, an example of that would be um, the first. Uh, yeah, I already said it. So letting the, let letting the, uh, allowing black people specifically to get into white predominantly businesses and, ed and educational uh, type of situations. Then you have like uh, so it says. Hold on, I done lost track where I wrote that thing at. Damn it! But, but go ahead if you want to tap in while I look for. It. All right, I think my service was messing up right there. But yeah, so what I was gonna say is that um, not only do they fucking deserve it, it's it's like oh no, that's what I was gonna say. It's just like how now there's laws that require them to hire fucking homosexual people, and they require them to to hire people that are um, trans, and they require them to hire right. like you have to hire everybody that's on that. It's the exact same, just like that. That's just yeah. where it originated from. We were the first right. ones to be told, "Now nah, you can't come here because you're black." So now it's like, no, you have to allow these people, even if they're black. Right. No, nah, that's that's for real. Because I mean, to, to be to be quite honest, I've I've um probably been turned down for jobs based on how how I look and you know what I um reference myself as. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure it's plenty of, of, of other people who've been turned down because of their orientations and things like that. So in a sense, pro. Uh, affirmative action is 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 good because it doesn't give it doesn't give uh, employers or higher institutions the opportunity to discriminate. You know, because just because somebody is is like that in the LGBT or whatever they may have a lot of kids, don't mean that they're not gonna work. Just exactly. means that you have to deal with working with all type of people. Because why this the world that we live in? It's a melting pot. Why can't you work with everybody? Okay, you got your own beliefs. That's cool. Have your own beliefs and shit like that. But I mean, work. A motherfucker gonna work. Oh, sorry. Work is work. You know what I mean? So yeah. and, and you said it's a melting pot. Of, you see, like I like that one, but the one that I like actually I don't like that one. I like the one that I like is where they be saying it's a salad because a melting pot. Everything just come together to become one thing. Like you know, little. Oh yeah, that, it's a salad. Like, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, we all we all stand exactly how we are. We just intermingling with each other in this bitch, and it's all good. It's gonna taste good. We're gonna put some dressing on this bitch and keep it moving. Yeah, we're gonna put some dressing on it and keep it moving. We don't all gotta um you know what I'm saying? We don't all gotta like be, be the, the same. same. <laughs> you know, people can be different. You can like uh orange soda, I can like grape soda. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? and, but we like soda. The commonality is that we like soda, people. Exactly. You feel me? So, so uh, affirmative action. You know, it could, it could, it could be beneficial. It could have its advantages, just like with anything. For real, yeah. for real. 
That's how you Anything could have its advantages and disadvantages, but I think when you're dealing with who controls the laws of the land and who can who is the most dominant race in the world, then they control the lingo or the direction and talk of what what's happening. Yeah, and that's that's what I mean, the systematic shit. Like, and that's what matters because it's like people don't realize it. They'd be like, well, there'd be black cops or there'd be black uh, fucking politicians and shit like that. It's like the system is racist. So no matter who you put into that actual system in that position, the results are going to come out on some racist shit, period. Right. That's where people get it confused. They're like, well, this person is black. It's like, well, it doesn't matter that they're black. They're following the same set of rules that this fuck that's fucking set to be racist. Like, there's. Then they don't have no choice but to be racist too. Right. So until until the laws, uh, the the actual laws change, then for real we can't really change nothing unless we change it amongst the the minorities itself. And that's what we need to do. We need to fucking be coming together. Like, look, I'm gonna have my little. We having a fucking community. We are gonna have our own shit. We are gonna have our representatives. This block to this block. We are gonna police this shit ourselves. You know. Right. What's a- Answer shit on some. I'm. We here to have our own shit right here. Because, because we own. we have black elites, man. We got black elites that's making billions of dollars. Why can't we just generate black jobs, black businesses, black education amongst our own elite? Like, why don't I mean, we show if the white man feel like this world would be so much better without Hispanics and black people? Why don't we come together as a as a united force and show them? Okay, we're gonna take our money out. And we're gonna put our money back into us. We're gonna take out all our smart black people out the out your jobs, out your education. <laughs> Did you see me blow the joint? <laughs> <laughs> Making all the wishes. Make some wishes for me. To... <laughs> Let me we out here, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? My man blew a little daddy. That's right, cuz. <laughs> We out here living life, fuck you talking about. <laughs> nah, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's advantages. And how do you think that we can overcome affirmative action, or will we ever overcome affirmative action? I think that the only way we go overcome affirmative action is one, like it is now. Everybody's mixing so much, so shit's gonna be so mixed up. It's not gonna be no more fucking pure Caucasian shit, and that's right. and that they really do fear that shit, but it's already happening. And then right. the other thing is, majority of the world is becoming Hispanic, not becoming Hispanic, but is majority Hispanic, or, you know, yeah. especially right here in the U.S., it's starting to become majority Hispanic, so it's like, right. it's already going to be swaying away from being most mostly white, and so at that time, it's going to be like, all right, now we're going to be, I feel like, as black people still pushed marginally out from the Hispanic and the Caucasian groups are both going to be larger, and we're just going to be on the edge from that. Yeah, and that's I why feel we need like to be like we need to be because we don't like you know even though Hispanics don't really come together to rah rah together, which they are, they're starting to get to it because it's starting to be younger Hispanics. You know, like yeah. on that shit, like too, but fucking their older generation still spend money with Hispanic. Like you know, they're buying Hispanic shit. Shit pops up. Even fucking Asian companies are buying shit. Hispanic are selling Hispanic shit because it's like, oh, they only buy Hispanic shit, so we don't sell right. that shit. We're not gonna fucking get that money and shit. Right. So they know. So the white white man, white man, white society know how to capitalize capitalize off us. So once we like pick that up and realize that, I think we can change it because actually, in 2023, for those people who don't know, people have been actually battling affirmative action for at least 30 years. Okay. In 2023, in January, the Supreme Court made a ruling on affirmative action, which I believe the ruling is going to be to eliminate it. And now they did a case study with uh, Harvard University and University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, where the two plaintiffs, they came together against the government saying that there's too many Hispanics and African-Americans being led into our school and good, hardworking Asian and white people ain't getting the same uh, uh, enrollment or employment because they white and Asian, <laughs> and and that's bullshit. That's baloney. You know, I mean, yeah, I get it. In the beginning, the whole point of it was still for them to just be able to say we threw y'all a bone and y'all should take it. And now they're like, nah, that bone is too much, and we want to take it back. It's like, fuck you, nah. This is we like the bone was never enough. We shouldn't have never really wanted the bone, but the fact that we got it, what the fuck? I look like giving it back to you. I've been chewing on this motherfucker. No, right. And I've been chewing on this motherfucker. <laughs> like, come on. Come on, what you mean? 
<laughs> that's not it's all goofy. It's like it's like you made the law because you know you were doing shit wrong and now you think, oh, let's go back to doing shit wrong and even it back out. Like, uh no. Yeah, and that's not gonna work. They just gonna keep <laughs> doing the shit wrong and they just gonna keep manipulating the system to to make it more beneficial for the white man. See, I'm gonna give you an example. So for people that don't know, affirmative action has these things called proxies, right? So if you don't know what a proxy is, it's just a way where compute it's a tool. That is a marketing tool that people can use in order to market to specific zip codes. And those zip codes are are where specific people are at, like black, brown, white. So what they're doing with this affirmative action is they're using these proxies to uh, uh, market certain things to certain people. Like in Baltimore, I'm going to give you an example. So in Baltimore... On the in the city side in the hood, it is no organic uh, grocery stores. Like it's no Whole Foods, it's no Moms, it's no none of that. Now the reason being is because the white man said, "Well, black people don't eat healthy, so we're not gonna even put healthy grocery stores in their community." What? So they use these type of proxies to kind of marginalize uh, certain races and, and everything too. And also, this is another fun fact that at any time a policy or practice depends on where you live, the race proxy emerges. So more, more broadly, wealth and income also plays race proxies in the U.S. and as this child attends. So depending on what zip code you in, it's gonna automatically tell you where your what child what, what your school what school your child going to. And based on your zip code, your school your child may be going to the worst school in that zip code. And that's what I'm talking about. Where, where I'm talking about is it wasn't equal, and that'd be our problem. We we think that we have to fuck with them to get equal. Like nah, give us the right teachers, give us motherfuckers that care, give us a fucking I mean school bullshit anyways, but give us a fucking curriculum that really teach us some shit. Right. And not no bullshit because they're not even teaching us. They're not even really teaching our children how to be successful. What they're teaching our children is how to be sheeps, how to listen, do what you say, don't think outside the box. And that's the whole point of the school right there. And that was it's always like the point jail. of school. So that's why Jane I like that. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's like jail. Yeah. It's all a money move. Yeah, it's all a money move, man. Uh, so... I mean, hopefully, I think we should get it back. We, we'll be able to get get it together. You know what I mean? Um, before we go, I'm going to just play this quick commercial commercial break real quick. There's a story. And then we're going to come back and um, you, you tell the people where they can uh, shop at blackcornman.com at. So, it's Thanksgiving. My mother just cooked a massive Thanksgiving meal. I mean, grilled turkey stuffing, cabbage, seafood macaroni. It's, it's banging. It's smacking. She done got me from Baltimore with my dummies. You feel me? Now, at the end of the Christmas dinner, you feel me? You know how people want to get food to go, you know? And we didn't really have a lot of people here. It was just me, my mother, my brother, and one of my mother friends, right? So, I, I'm i not going to lie. I was being greedy, all right? I, I didn't do nothing with Miles. I was just being greedy. So, I came upstairs, and I, I took both the turkey legs, and I put them in my to-go trays. Now, my brother come behind me. He think he about to get a turkey leg. They gone. He blow up like the Grinch. Urgh, you took both the turkey legs. I'm like, bro, you can have one of the turkey legs. I got it right here. He's like, no, you're selfish. Ah. So to this day, right now, my brother hate me over two turkey legs. True story. Yeah, <laughs> that story give me every time. <laughs> I got another. I got another cartoon coming up. It's a birthday cartoon I'm creating for uh, your mom. And then um, that joint gonna be nice. That joint gonna be lit. So that yeah. say mom, Duke, she got birthday a, a cartoon birthday commercial coming up. For sure, I'm gonna let her know she got something coming for you. You know she's trying to make that little thing for you too. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, so Black Cool Man, we had a great show, man. Affirmative action, man. What you learned today, Black Cool Man? Tell the people what you learned today. Man, I learned that there's more than one type of affirmative action and shit. Hell yeah. And I learned that I don't need to be so one-sided with affirmative action because affirmative action was definitely beneficial for our community. It was something that was that was needed. And um, I told you I'm not running. I got it's something that was needed. It's something that's needed, and it's something that 
it was it's beneficial, but can also be a con too. So you man, I learned a lot. You know what I mean? A hey, black woman, if they want to buy some of your clothes, your gear online, where they gotta go? Blackcorman.com. And, and we actually got a YouTube. We we gonna start posting stuff on YouTube and and TikTok and shit. So you know. Let's get that tick. Let's get that TikTok, YouTube. Hey, you already know. You know my YouTube going up, so I'm gonna be promoting like it ain't nobody business. You yeah, feel? Yeah, get, get your get your get YouTube. YouTube get, you know, tag you us to the YouTube and shit. Yeah, we trying to bleed on that because you gotta we get a certain amount to tag that, Man, we creating all forms of income, man. Make sure you um. If you a a black home, oh, you probably busy. I know you got a lot going on. But if you yeah. if you the die today tomorrow, what's the quote you can lead the world with? Uh, get your money first, man. Fuck everything else is gonna come. Is get your money first. Get, get the your money, money fuck first. The relationship. Fuck all the relationships, friendships, fucking relationships for real. Just get your bread first. Right. Get your bread, the head, then leave. Oh God. Stay you out the feel me? Hell yeah. And my, my quote, if I was to die today or tomorrow, my quote is, if it ain't reciprocated, it ain't regenerated. So if they ain't reciprocating what you giving out, fuck them. Straight like that. Ain't no yeah. other thing. Fuck them. If they're not me? giving what you giving, fuck that. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's Aquarius season. My birthday is 0202. 23 in this bitch, you feel me? Me and Mama Black Corn Man got a birthday, man. We gonna shine bright like diamonds. Hey, Black Corn Man, you already know. I always appreciate you tapping in with us. And uh, shout out to uh, Femi and Elijah, your two wonderful angels. Um, uh, shout out to Mama Black Corn Man. Make sure you show this particular clip in the YouTube channel. Shout yeah, out to Mama you. Black Corn Man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shout I out to appreciate Mom. You. Hell yeah. yeah. So I'll see you next Wednesday, man. We're gonna get a topic going. We're gonna come up with something, but thank you for tapping in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Already. Y'all already know that was my dude. Black cool man in the month. Big that is the illest, the dopest black man I know. And that's my brother. My co-host, Black Corn Man. Make sure y'all tap into his website. He got socks, coats, jackets, bubble jackets, shorts, hats. Whatever you need, he got it. If you try and get a, a, a Lotte catering and you on the West Coast, holla at my boy. He does the best Elotes and his workers are his children. So you got to hire him. Come on. Make sure y'all follow me on uh, Instagram, big homie underscore smiles, backup page 41. Make sure y'all check out my YouTube page, Treetop Radio LA. Or um, if you type in TTRLA in all caps, it might not come out. You might just got to um, type in Treetop Radio LA. And it'll come up. My logo is in the, in the top right. In the top right, right there. Right there. So make sure y'all tap in with me, man. I appreciate y'all again, whether it's one or none or two or a few. Without no me, it ain't no you you feel me so thank y'all for tapping in hey tell me what y'all think in the comments below man like subscribe share to my youtube channel you feel me help me run it up and help me monetize there's a lot of chaos on the internet right now help me run it up um tell me what y'all think though was uh affirmative action good or bad your opinion matters around here Free Simba till he free you already know that's my boy. Free Jamil. Free my little cousin Anthony, you feel me? Long live my little cousin Meatball. And, and long live everybody that's lost the loved ones, you know what I'm saying? Free all the real, you know what I'm saying? Death to all rats, you know what I mean? But if you if you ratting and you still getting to the money, good ratting. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, man. A hey, shout out to my hood, 41, Big 41, Capitol Heights. You heard me. You heard. Long live Dino De Niro, man. 41 till I D-I-E. That shit bleed through my veins. You hear me? Shout out to D.C., Northeast, Southeast, Uptown, Southwest. Shout out to Maryland, Baltimore, PG County, Suitland, Riverdale, Oxon Hill, Marlowe Heights, uh, 26 Parkway, Hilltop. Shout out to all the hoods, man. Shout out to VA Highway. Highway! 
Shout out to uh, Richmond, Virginia. Shout out to everybody, 5,000, 3,000. Green Valley, shout out to all y'all, man. Shout out to the projects one and two in VA. If you know, you know. And uh, yeah, man, tap in with me, man. Every time we're gonna come with some amazing topics, every time we're gonna keep y'all focused, we're gonna keep y'all tapped in. You feel me? So make sure y'all just keep watching us, keep tapping in. TTRLA, man. I'm your host, Big Homie Smiles. Make sure you like subscribe and share to my youtube channel you heard we're gonna leave out with a nice little video from my boy uh three oh black three oh three oh viral dc artist doing his thug you feel me good man good father Say, man, it's Street Top Radio LA.